Hey what is up guys, welcome back to the channel. Now Dakar Desert Rally released a couple of days ago at this point and uh, I've been doing a you know, few gameplay covers, just the usual showcasing all the different classes and such and now I thought while I've you know put a couple of hours into it I could give my early impressions of the game. But before we do that I just want to say a massive thank you to the sponsor of this video, the controller people. Um, I'll have my affiliate link down in the description down below. They are there for all your PlayStation custom controller needs. They do pro controllers, custom designs and all that good stuff. So make sure you check them out if you are in need of a brand new PlayStation controller made to the highest quality possible. Okay, so this game has been out a couple of days and I just want to give my, I guess, first impressions um, in kind of the early stages of the game uh, and kind of just, you know, bring out a few problems that I do have and a few things that I genuinely do like about this game. Now, it does retail for around about £34.99, so it's definitely, you know, pretty much half the price of uh, most big releases. Um, I've been quite hyped for this game ever since I saw it be announced um, you know I was really kind of looking forward to it it's something different and I did whilst I did enjoy Dakar 18 I felt like it was just missing quite a bit now this game really is a massive step up from that game however it does have a few issues and that's mainly with what a lot of AAA racing games seem to be doing recently is essentially promising features which are actually not in the game at launch so if you watch the kind of overview trailer of this game, there was a lot of promise around the 20,000 square kilometer map, which you can essentially open world and explore. That is currently not in the game. That is actually slated, I believe this month, for uh, definitely uh, before the end of the year, which is, you know, a massive shame because that's a huge draw for a lot of people, is essentially going around this ridiculously huge um, map. So that is really just a quite big, uh, missing feature including being able to build your own routes that's not in the game at launch which was something that again was mentioned in the overview trailer as well as being able to make your own custom liveries which I believe is now slated for next year so really disappointing that yet again another developer with a racing game is promising features which are well not there at launch you know I can kind of in a way let it slide because there still is a ton of content here for the price point but you know, it's disappointing to be sort of promised so much in an overview trailer and then realise half of it isn't actually there um, come launch day of the game. So, you know, it, I get this is a smaller developer and I don't really want to, you know, absolutely slate them for it. But come on, racing game developers, please, I'm begging you, stop promising features, especially, you know, quite big features um, that are just not there when your game um, obviously gets on the shelves and gets released to the public. So with that out of the way, I just want to kind of give you a general overview about what this game's about, you know, what's good about it, what I don't like about it, um, and all that good stuff. So let's get on to the bad parts first, you know, we're on a bit of a negative point, so let's carry on that momentum. Okay, the main gripe I have about this game is such a little thing, but it's really, really annoying, um, especially if you cannot find the setting to turn it off. And that is actually the announcer's voice. It is the most, I, I, I want to say, the worst voice acted, I guess, co-driver I think I've ever heard in a kind of off-road racing game. Um, you will need to dive into the audio settings to be able to turn him off. Um, and once you do, it's a different experience. But then you are constantly watching um, the kind of you know guides at the top of your screen instead of being able to just listen and know where you're going so hopefully they do kind of you know get someone to do I guess some other voice lines for it or someone else to do the voices for it as the game kind of develops and um, you know yeah, I guess gives us options to choose different voice or co-pilots because the default is yeah absolutely terrible um, another thing to note there's a few kind of visual I guess bugs and stutters um, early on on day one um, you know for the, the first 24 hours really um, I did notice a bunch of errors within the PlayStation 5 version constantly getting errored and having to you know go to the dashboard and restart the game I haven't had many since day one so I don't know if that was just kind of you know something really early on um, but uh, yeah that first 24 hours very off-putting 
Another thing, and this is a big thing for me, especially with the availability of consoles. So I have a you know a bunch of friends, a bunch of subscribers and such, which all kind of like to get together and race in different you know racing games. So the excitement was very much here for Dakar Rally. You know, there was so much potential with the multiplayer. Um, you know, it would have been a whole bunch of fun and a whole laugh. However, sadly, for some crazy reason, which seems to be you know the standard at this point. PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 players cannot play together if they're on differing versions. So I've actually had to download the PS4 version, which I will have, I'm going to assume, none of my saved data on. Um, and I'm going to have to go through that one to be able to get decent cars and such before diving into the online with friends that are on the PS4. So it's really frustrating that PlayStation you know, 5 users, if they have friends on PS4, are essentially forced to download the PS4 version and essentially restart their whole progress and use probably you know a version that's not as kind of you know in your face or good looking um, which is just a real shame like for me that should be the norm at this point it's not really cross platform or anything it's essentially just you know two playstation consoles with you know different versions that you have to download which is just absolutely ridiculous it's it's a massive you know missed opportunity for the online and i feel like that it could possibly have a massive knock-on effect to how long this game lives in terms of its online play so now let's talk about some of the good stuff okay i've got most of the negatives you know off my chest um, the gameplay itself and the, the content itself very very good you know the cars do have a good feeling you do have to be quite specific in pretty much any of the free modes in terms of setting your car up for each stage um, you know you really want to you know get a good feeling for it and get it set up properly uh, the default setups for cars are not very good there's a kind of a bit of a feeling where you go and turn and it feels like you try and turn the other way but the car keeps going um, the original way that you turned um, I do find like turning down tire pressure and such does help out with stuff like that. Um, so you really do have to, you know, have a not I wouldn't say necessarily decent knowledge, but kind of set the car up for each individual run um, to the best of your knowledge. In terms of the, you know, the gameplay itself, it is very, very good. Personally, I absolutely love the way it looks. Um, visual wise a lot of people have really slated it um, in in my comments and said oh it'll be free within a year and I, I don't think so it seems like the developers do have long-term support for this game and I do think they will go through with it you know there's there's paid DLC there's free update roadmaps um, so there's, there is a lot to look forward to at least within the next year of this game and you know to have so much post support for a £35 game is, is very much promising. It means that the developers are hopefully here for the long run and not just putting it out on shelves as it is with you know some of the missing features and such and then just abandoning it. Um, hopefully they will continue to improve this game because it really does deserve it, you know, and, and that's another point. You know, Dakar is such a unique thing. You know, there's a bunch of um, you know off-road games and such that don't quite hit the mark to have an official Dakar game with all the you know vehicles from like I believe it's like 2022 2021 2020 and classics it just really does feel awesome it really it genuinely feels very much authentic when you are playing it like you are playing a proper Dakar experience and it, it does kind of give itself this unique kind of setting in this unique feeling you know I've, I was kind of worried about the environments as well so I'm going to touch on them quickly um, that the you know obviously it's a, a desert rally you know are they going to be able to make them feel diverse and different and not once have I played a stage where it felt samey it all felt very different very unique so they've absolutely nailed that for what essentially could have been a limited environment they've definitely not limited themselves in terms of you know getting a proper authentic differing feeling from stage to stage very quickly i'm going to touch on the free modes so there is sport mode which is where you have cars take off with you um, and essentially you have all the assists on it or kind of point everything out then you have a middle mode where it sort of tones it down for me it's pretty pointless i feel like if you're going to do any you want to do sport or you want to do the full sim however you do have to sadly hit level 25 to be able to unlock it which really does give you the proper dakar experience everything essentially turned off i am not quite there yet um, so when i do get there i will showcase some of that gameplay maybe do a, a you know playthrough a full hardcore simulated uh, playthrough of this um of this game 
uh, which I feel like will be very interesting to do, especially with obviously the long term um, support. So I will carry on to, you know, you know, you know, covering this game into the future because it is genuinely a enjoyable game. It's definitely a very good base game. Um, you know, in terms of its release, it's been a better release than most games. If you, you know, want to kind of dive in, it is available for thirty-five pounds or your equivalent currently. So definitely you know go and try this out if you're a fan of off-road games it's definitely something unique and hopefully it will continue to improve over time don't forget to like comment and subscribe turn those notifications on so you don't miss an upload from myself discord donation links they're all in the description down below and i'll see you all in the next one cheers guys peace